Alright everyone, so today we are going to talk about the property tables. If you were to ask me which is one of the most important uh, segments of all thermodynamics uh, modules that we are going to cover, you are looking at it. Okay? This along with the previous two segments are very important, property tables. We will have to read information from property tables. Okay? But before I go and explain you all the detail of you know tables and you you get to see on the screen a couple of them, but um, you know let's look at what I am looking at over here. So this is Chang'e, ninth edition. Okay, that's the textbook that I'm using. Okay, uh, required textbook. So this table A4 through A8 are for you can see over here everything water 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 right so this is water tables so we will be referring to these tables very often okay um, so before going through and explaining all one by one which I will do because it's very important I want to explain why do I need a table well actually if I go back to the previous segment let's uh, pick any let's say this well how can I uh, you know how can I let's say that I am even simpler I'm interested in um, atmospheric pressure, right? How can I write down to you what is this value? What is this value? What is because I have, let's say, the, you know, I have the internal energy. I have. I'll talk about something called enthalpy, entropy. Um, so there are so many things to write on a graph. So I can't do it. Okay. So it's much more convenient for me to go ahead and write these in a, a, a table format. Okay. That's why we have the proper tables at the back of the book. Okay. And this A4, these are for in Appendix 1 for SI, and I have Appendix 2, and these will have, you know, E at the end, English units, okay, E, 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 so those are going to be for the British Gravitational, and it's Appendix 2, so you may want to look at it, okay. But, okay, let's take a look at what I'm dealing with over here, Table A4, lists, I'm just reading off here, a saturated water temperature table okay saturated water temperature table and a5 is it still the same saturated water but this time as a function of the pressure listed over so this is the pressure this is the temperature okay okay so then what it means is I, I want to go back to here to the uh, constant temperature case the thing is okay so now the thing that I'm looking over here this is a busy uh, graph so I run out of colors <laughs> But let's say red. Um, so this information, I'm looking here, I'm looking here, or anywhere in between right here will be obtained by A4 and A5. Okay. So this is an information that you need to uh, 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 know. Okay. So any information that I will need to tap into will be listed in A4 and A5. If my temperature is known, then you can see, by the way, this is just brief uh, snapshot of the table A4. So this goes to, what do you think this goes to? And do, do you remember these numbers? Yeah, these numbers are for triple point or triple line, right? I, I listed here, I'll show you in the previous segment, you see? It, it is the minimum. What about the maximum? Well, look here, what I said, it goes to all the way to the optic critical uh, point. And the last point that they will plot is T, or rather list is T is equal to 373. 0.95 that will be the critical point for A4 and for A5 they will be listing this one right okay so we established that table now let's look at this uh, specific volume which is what we did as this right lowercase uh, v right this internal energy is u and it's listed in kilojoules not joules but kilojoules per kilogram and I have something called enthalpy I'll explain that in a minute okay and I have something called entropy Again, I'll explain in a minute too, but just bear with me for a second over here because I want to make a point. And the point, the point I want to make is, let's say that I'm interested in specific uh, volume at, let's say, 20 degrees C. I pick this as an example, right? So the corresponding saturation pressure, and I've discussed this as a, you know, in this particular regime where I'm going from the saturated liquid to saturated vapor, these are like pairs. They're not, they're not independent anymore. If the temperature is 20, I have one specific saturation pressure, and that's given in kilopascals, okay? And you see what over here, it says, you know, maybe I should write it bigger, F, V, G. So the F stands for, well, it clearly says here, saturated liquid, this is, stands for the saturated vapor, okay? So if I go up here to any, let's say, this, this graph, right? So I was here, this is going to be 
VF, this is going to be VG. Okay, so this is A4, that's what listing me this information. Okay, so I think I covered this uh, well enough. So I don't want to cover A5 as detailed because it is pretty much the same thing, except now instead of listing, because here, let, let's say that I'm interested in 2.3, right? But if the question gave me that, hey, the saturated pressure is 2 kilopascals. Well, I can do something called interpolation. I'll show you that. But you don't have to. It is just, just for your convenience. It's listed in here. Same thing over here. Um, if the, you're, you know, if you just had A5 and you're looking at these, you know, the temperature is given as 20. Well, it's not listed here. It's right it's listed in here. It's by convenience. Okay. In fact, you can find everything about A5 from this. If I have just A4, I will be able to find everything about, you know, I can replicate this. But it will be a long process. Anyways, this is a long process to begin with. So this is a good time save measure, okay? Okay, so let me talk about the H, okay? I talk about the H, I said that, wait, I'll talk about that in a minute and that is the minute, okay? H is called enthalpy. This is very hard to spell, so let me see whether I did it right. Yes, I was lucky this time around. I was able to, you know, do it properly. And this is gonna be U plus, which is the internal energy. P is the pressure specific volume so i simply you know what is going on on here is this is a grouping of the internal energy pressure which i know so let's say that you know, let's look at this like a particular pressure here right this is uh, you know the internal energy is given p is known at that particular uh, you know um, point i know my specific volume so this kind of seems silly if you think about that. I can also obtain this from here, from this value, as well as knowing where I'm at, okay, in terms of whether I'm at 100% vapor or, you know, 0% vapor. So I will be able to obtain this from these two. So again, why am I doing this then, right? It comes down to the convenience, okay? These are not introduced to make your life harder than exams and it's, it's introduced to make you, your life easier, okay? I will be using this H in uh, two, I'll give you two examples why it's important, okay? It is extremely important and much more convenient if I'm interested in uh, module five. When I go to the module five, I will talk about the, I will pick a control volume or open systems and I, there will be mass coming into my control volume and there will be mass leaving my control volume. So the energy transferred through these mass leaving, entering my system will be related to the age. Okay, so over there, instead of keep writing U plus PV, U plus PV, U plus PV, I just write an H and call that A because it's listed in here. So it is very convenient for me to know this. Okay, that's number one place. The second uh, place that we will actually see this sooner is if I'm interested in the energy balance for an isobaric constant pressure, constant pressure process. Uh, let's say I have a closed piston cylinder device, right? I, I gave plenty of examples. Again, H will come in handy. So this is. Uh, and you can see, by the way, um, it has to be for uh, dimensional homogeneity, right? The units are the same because I simply U plus something and this something must be kilojoule per kilogram too, right? In SI. So you can see what is happening over here, okay? The next thing I want to talk extremely briefly is the entropy, okay? Entropy, it's not enthalpy, it's entropy. This entropy is related to the second law and you will see we will cover this in module 7. So I'm going to write it in here. This is module 7. So I will refer back. You see how important these tables are? In module 7, bam, I'm still looking at this table. Module 5, bam, I'm still looking at this table. So it's still the table. So it's extremely important that we really know this, um, you know, quite well. Okay. Um, one thing I also want to mention over here is, uh, okay, here. Oh boy, this is going to get a little uncomfortable for you in my opinion. So these two, let's say that I'm interested in this, right? So these two is a function of my temperature is given. So this information is given, this information is given, right? But remember, these are not discrete. So what I mean is I may have a state here. I may have a state here. I may have a state here. I may have a state in here, right? So the question I'm posing over here is what will happen or how am I going to be able to calculate the information of this point, okay? 
In order to do that, I need to introduce you something called quality. Okay, this is actually a property. I'm introducing you something called quality of saturated liquid vapor mixture. Okay, so this quality, so let's explain this. The quality is you work real hard to earn your paycheck. So you have to buy something of quality, it doesn't have to be the most expensive, so that it can last for a while, right? Okay, that has absolutely nothing to do with thermodynamic quality that I'm talking about. I just felt like saying it. Um, yeah, okay, let's go back. This quality is this. Um, actually, why don't I replicate this this uh, here, because instead of I go back and forth to the, to the graphs, right? So let's say T, I think that's the example that I gave. And I have a steam dome over here, something like that, right? If I plot one particular like this, right? TV is gonna be like that. And if I had, had plotted P, V, then this will be like this. Remember that? Okay. And I say that I'm at th this point, arbitrarily, at some point, right? So this quality, which is a property, is 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 abbreviated by the letter in the alphabet X. Okay? It's called the quality of X. And what it represents is it determines that what is the proportion or the percentage of the mixture is the vapor state. What that means, if, if this x is equal to 0, I'm right over here. If this x is equal to 1, I'm right over there. Okay? Did you see it's between 0 and 1? 0 over here, 1 over there. And the 0 and 1 values are given to me in the table, proper the tables. But that's not the only two states. I also have a states over here. So that's what I'm trying to calculate. And the way we define it is actually fairly straightforward. I'm going to have the mass at the vapor state, because if it is zero, it's, I'm right over there, so I have to be consistent, divided by the total mass, uh, you know, the total mass in my, uh, you know, uh, system. If I write it this way, mg divided by mf plus mg. And I want to uh, make a point over here uh, quickly. Um, you see over here, this is called f not L. Liquid, the first letter of liquid is L, but it is F. Don't ask me, I don't know why. But this is VF, okay? So this is not L. Just want to highlight, okay? So fine, cool. I have this type of a property now. But so what? How am I going to be able to use them? Well, let me show you how you're going to be able to use them. I'll give you an example for the first one. The first one is uh, this one, right? Specific volume. So let's start by that. And I will, the, 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 the way that we do will be the same. For other ones, so I'm not going to do it, okay? Um, you know this, right? So in this particular uh, point that I'm at, the total volume will be the summation of the uh, liquid, summation of the vapor, right? Because this is a mixture between those two, okay? And I have up there, so I know this M will be MF plus MG, right? Right here, right? Okay, then let's do this. Why don't I... Um, then, then write it this way. So actually, I'm, I, I don't want to teach this in very detail because this is simply a math, okay, stuff that is coming from. Um, so, but anyways, so the volume, total volume will be the mass times the specific volume of the total system, isn't it? And this will be the mass of the liquid times the specific uh, volume of the fluid plus mass of the vapor times the specific volume of the gas or the vapor, right? Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to divide both sides of the equation by the total mass, okay? Because when I look at this equation, the total mass is the denominator, so I want to get something that looks like it, so I can call the day, right? So I'll get mf divided by total uh, mass um, times the specific volume of the liquid plus mg divided by m times specific volume of the vapor as well, okay? Um, so, okay, so x is defined as mg divided by mg plus mf, right? I wrote it over there. So this becomes this, do you see it? Okay, but the other thing is if the total volume or rather the total mass is formed by mg and mf, look at what this becomes. 1 minus x becomes, you know, 1 minus mg divided by mg plus mf and then, you know, divided by 1, mg plus mf. So you can see mg's cancel, and I got myself mf, 
divided by mg plus mf. Don't I? Yep, I do. And this is actually this, you see? This becomes 1 minus x, this becomes an x. You see why this is uh, kind of convenient for us? So this is the total specific volume will be 1 minus x times the liquid specific volume plus x times specific volume of the vapor for water. Okay? Um, actually, this is it, but this is not the most commonly used version, so I kind of combine these two in this way. Okay? You can see that this is multiplied by minus x, this is multiplied by plus x, so I want to combine them that manner, and I'll, I'll box that equation up. And this is going to be the specific volume of the liquid plus specific, uh, x times specific volume of the vapor minus specific volume of the liquid. And this is the difference, okay? So if I go back up over here, this is actually the difference, okay? Um, okay, do you see this? Another convenient, and same thing A4. I don't have to, you know, I, can, I only need to cover one of them. Do you see this UFG as actually this minus that? And at first instance, you may be thinking, hey, this was silly, you know, you subtract this minus that, and you put it here, why? Just, just subtract it yourself. Well, no, because this, this F, uh, this abbreviation, this actually is known as FG, okay? And if I expand this to the other uh, properties, I have U will be equal to, same logic, UF plus X times now UFG, okay? H will be HF plus X times HFG. Entropy, which we'll cover down the road, will be exactly the same type of arrangement, okay? So now with this, I was able to cover, obviously I need to give an example to illustrate how it's done, but you can see in here that I should be able to obtain, um, you know, like this, this chart here. So I can obtain here, 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 anywhere, as long as this line, and I have a bunch of them, anywhere that you want, I will be able to obtain. So within this steam dome, including the steam dome itself, now I'm good to go, okay? Obviously, this is not the only region that I have. I have superheated over here. I have a um, compressed liquid over here. I'll cover that in the next uh, video because this has been a long one to begin with, okay? Thank you for listening to me. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.